Today we're going to be talking about revenue recognition. Revenue recognition is the new offering with the latest of the JDE releases, 9.2. The setup is accomplished through two new accounts receivable applications, P03B216 and P03B420. There are four different avenues it, through which you can recognize revenue. Accounts receivable invoices, sales order invoices, contract billing, and service billing. Today we're going to be focusing on sales order invoices exclusively. There are two new financial AAIs that need to be set up and one new distribution manufacturing AAI. To comply with the FASB and IASB regulations. P03B216 allows you to define which of the companies will be using revenue recognition. You can disable all companies, you can enable all companies, or you can tell the system you wish to enable or disable by company. Here is a picture of P03B216. If you can see it, it's mighty small, the top portion is set up for company all zeros, the default company. Then you tell it whether or not you wish to disable all of them, enable all of them, or choose by company. We chose to do it by company. So then when I, the next screen, you're prompted for the company number and then whether or not you wish to enable or disable for this particular company. P03B420 further defines how the revenue recognition will be applied. There's a hierarchy of fields to be examined, the date comparisons, and the configuration. Each application that we spoke about, accounts receivable, sales order invoices, contract billing, and service billing, have their own distinct and different hierarchy, dates, and configuration. Here is a picture of P03B420. When you first come in, it will display all of the companies. And as you can see, we have said that we wish to recognize revenue using the new applications for company one and we have shown that we are going to enable that. Once we click on that row and then use our row menu we can say we want to do the sales order setup. As you can see we've got the sales order hierarchy, the date setup, and then the configuration setup. We're going to go through each of those screens. Here is the hierarchy for the sales order triggers. You must number these fields sequentially. You cannot skip numbers, but you can leave fields blank. As you can see, I've chosen first to look at the ship to number, then the carrier, and then the mode of transport. After that, I'm going to look at the shipped to category code, category code one. I want to emphasize here that these category codes come from the customer master, not the address book. There's kind of a got you if you're using demo data like I was, in that the ones that you see in the address book do not match the ones that are in the customer master. So I hope I will save you some time when I tell you check the customer master category codes because those are the ones that you're going to be using. This is the date comparison screen. Here we tell by company how we want to calculate the from date. And as you can see I have I put the definitions of each of the dates down here so that you could see them. This is the calculation from date. If I put a one in there, it's going to look at the ship date as the beginning date of my calculation of days, as I will show you 
later on in the configuration. Here is my period comparison date. And again, I have the definition down here for you to see. And I have chosen GL date, ship date and GL date, which means that in the number of days that I have defined in my configuration, which I think is five, if I remember correctly, it's going to look at the ship date to see whether or not it falls within five days of the GL date in the transaction. More on that later. This is P03B420's configuration screen. This is where we define the values that we wish our triggers to look for in order to include it in the revenue recognition application. You can see that I have rearranged my grid and excluded fields from the grid so that I see only those fields that I have defined as triggers and in the order in which I defined them. I have my ship two number, then my carrier, motor transport, category code, etc. Here is where I tell the system that the dates I define, the ship date and the GL date, are to be used to calculate whether or not the transaction falls within those number of days, and is it in the same period? I want to be sure that at my, both sides of my transaction, the invoice recording and the revenue recognition are in the same period. And with five days, I'm probably pretty safe that that's going to happen. That's why I have defined this, that it only happens with this particular carrier, FedEx, and expedited. So the customer should have received the goods within the five days I've defined. You can see that below here, I have transport by C, COD. I've given it 60 days, but I also said I couldn't have it in the same period. Or I shipped it by rail, and again, I've given it 15 days, but my chances of having it fall within the same period are still less than the expedited shipping within five days. Now, I will tell you that we set up two separate query by example grids that we used for two different companies. I defined company one and I could define company 200. So one grid I named company 100 and one grid I named company 200 so that I could have both of the grids in the order in which I needed them, even though they may be different between the two companies. Now let's talk about the two new financial AIs, RP and RQ. RP, they have an example for you to copy. It's for company 00000, and it's at sequence 3.550 and it tells you to please use that same sequence number when you define yours, if you are going to define your company specific, which I did. You can also use the suffix, just like in the other financial AAIs. So I put the GL class code from the customer master as the suffix of my RP AAI. Business units are optional. And I will show you where you can define the business unit that you want the system to use when you leave the business unit blank. RQ is the other new one, sequence number 3.551. Again, you can use the suffix from the customer master and the business unit is optional. Here's a picture of RP financial AAI that I set up. You can see that I did not mention a business unit in any of these. Here is RQ again. I defined one for RQ blank and one for RQ base, just like I did for RP, 
and I left my business unit blank. The new distribution manufacturing AI is 4225. Again, your business unit is optional, and the processing options in R42800 allow the business unit usage dis designation. And the processing options in R42800, the sales order update, allow the business unit usage designation. This is a picture of 4225. I defined one for all other category codes, but in particular, the two items that I was using had IN30 as the GL class code in the item branch plant record. Here are the processing options for R42800, the sales order update, as I had said. And this option number five on the defaults tab is where you tell it what general ledger business unit you want it to use to build the account number to record the revenue recognition entries. Blank and option number three are the same. It will use the revenue business unit for the transactions that it's creating if that's what you wish. Option number one uses the business unit that's in the detail transaction line. And option number two uses the address book number as the business unit number in the transaction. Here's the invoice batch that was created when I ran R42800, the sales order update. This is the invoice line, and these are the GL distribution entries that you can see in this batch. However, I don't know if you'll notice or not, but these are not my revenue recognition entry lines. Those cannot be seen in this batch. However, they do exist. This is report R42800, the sales order update report. And again, you will not see the revenue recognition entries here in this report. However, if we go look at the batch using some of the new programs for revenue recognition in the accounts receivable module, we'll see two different ways that you can recognize revenue and get a very much better picture of the general ledger distribution for this batch. There's two ways to recognize revenue, guided and unguided. Guided uses P03B116, the revenue recognition workbench. This is a picture of that screen and it's a little busy, as you can see, because I wanted to show you several different things in the interest of time. Obviously, we can look for the invoice details. It looks just like the invoice portion of your batch. We have a revenue recognition status here that I've given you the definition for down here. However, if we look at the GL distribution, it gives a much better picture of the entries that will be recorded in the general ledger detail as a part of this batch. You can see your performance liability account here, 1.4041, and your cost of goods sold performance liability account down here, 1.4042. I'm also going to just kind of skip through the processing options for P03B116 because we wanted to keep this to 20 minutes. So here's the processing options for P03B116. I do want to interject a word of caution. If you have your sales orders updates set to summarize, you will not be able to use re revenue recognition. However, on a happier note, in P03B116, your revenue recognition workbench, you are able to void unposted transactions, and you are able to remove transactions from revenue recognition 
if the revenue recognition portion has not been completed. If you're like me that came up through the techie ranks, I like to see what's under the covers. These are three tables that are used in the revenue recognition workbench, F03B11T, F03B116, and F03B117. There's also F03B118 and F03B119 that provide audit trails for you of what happened to your revenue recognition, but they are not populated until after the revenue is recognized. The unguided method for revenue recognition is R03B116, and here's the processing options for that. I hope that this has made the sales order invoicing revenue recognition a little bit more understandable and that you have gotten some useful content out of this presentation. This is Beth Outram for SmartBridge.